Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? With the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? Conrad, I'm I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm better than I that that I been hey, I'm him. Oh, hold on. I got something for you. Hold on. Just in case you fuckers out there don't know that I know what I'm talking about. Ready? Ready. Stand by. Stand by. Ichi ni san da. Is that the famous Anoki chant? Yes. Yes, it is. Did you know that was a bad idea before you saw it? No, no. I, uh, I, have to admit, day, I didn't know it was a chant. Okay. I did. And during the day I talked to Excalibur. I talked to, uh, Rocky Romero and I said, this is how you say the chant, right? And they both said, yes. I said, okay, I got it. I said, so they come out, we'll lead them in the chant. He said, great. So I thought I was going to, uh, I thought I was going to lead the chant. And then I was told, no, you introduce the kids and bring Tony out and he'll lead the chant. Oh. And I didn't talk to Tony about it. I just heard this from one of our producers, right? And I went, you sure? He said, yes. So I'm in the back now studying the kids' names and I'm not studying the, the chant because, you know. You, you don't have to do it. I don't have to do it. And he turned and looked at me and it was like, oh, okay. Ichi and he son. I don't know what it is. So anyway. Life in TV on the run. You have an interesting life, Mr. Shravani, and it doesn't I get sure any do. more interesting than going live late night. This is one of the mm-hmm. few times we've ever done this, and we've got a big studio audience. Greatly appreciate you guys hanging out with us. I guess there's wrestling on another station on Monday night. I'm not familiar with that, but uh, here we are at 9 Central, 10 Eastern live. Man, this is, uh, this is fun. I like the idea of doing a little nighttime show with you, Tony. I think it should be a regular thing, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see if we can work that in because Monday nights, I'm usually free. Um, and uh, there you go. But hey, you never know, do you? You just never know. I like it. We'll try to keep this going. We're going to actually be going today to watch some old school Nitro. How old school? How about October of 1995? If you're going to watch along with us here in a little bit, I would encourage you to go get your peacock out. That's a streaming network. Apparently YouTube wow. thinks I need to explain that mm-hmm. and go to season one, episode seven of nitro. That's season one, episode seven. It went down October 16th, 1995. You know, on some level that doesn't seem like that long ago. And on the other hand, boy, it feels like forever ago, mm-hmm. almost 30 Ages. years ago. Yeah. Ages. That's what it feels like. You Ages. Know, I wonder. How many people on the AW roster were born after this night show we're about to watch? Well, that's a good question because, okay, so it's how many years ago again? 29. 20, 29 years ago. Well, let's see. MJF was, I know. Uh, Jack Perry was. I think Darby Allen was. Uh, probably the Guns. You know, we, and then there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them out there who are just, who were just babies at the time. Right. Yeah. A lot of the kids that are like, maybe like 32, 33 right now who are just like, you know, toddlers or so. So yeah, a time does fly, man. Oh, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> wow. This is crazy. You can find almost anything. Sports Kita has it. Uh, Dante Sports Martin, Kita. Darius Martin, Hook. Alan Angels, Daniel Garcia, Anna J, Brock Anderson, Isaiah Cassidy, Griff Garrison, Jungle Boy, Riho, Lee Johnson, Marco Stunt, MJF, Layla Hirsch, Bear Bronson, Sottenham Singh, Jamie Hayter, Chris Statlander. I mean, this is crazy. Think about that. None of these folks that we just rattled off, including a whole lot of other folks, Austin Gunn, Leo Rush, Sammy Guevara, none of these folks. I don't believe we're here to see. This is wild. This is wild. We're old. What happened? I don't know. How old were you? Uh, 14. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah, you can't even make an inappropriate joke because I said 14. Oh, I can find something to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. I love I never, you for that. I never stopped me before to saying bullshit about somebody. Hey, speaking of bullshit, did you hear yeah. that uh, Coach Rosie and his wife are celebrating an anniversary today by watching really? our podcast right now? They're with us live. And today is their anniversary. For their anniversary, they ate dinner, and now they're with us here on the podcast. How wild is that? Oh, man. That's what I call uh, dedication. I'm just saying. Yeah, man. How do you sell? Uh, Coach Rosie must be hung like a goddamn mule. How do you sell watching a wrestling podcast on your anniversary? I don't know. I bet his dick's got a knee in it. That's the first time I've ever heard that. I'm but just saying, one. I mean, I couldn't sell. I'm me. It's my own show. And even my wife wouldn't want to watch this shit on our anniversary. Yeah, you right. Know? Right. Hey, man, I really appreciate you not only no show in the wedding, but also forgetting my anniversary, even though I told you this past weekend. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Hey, really well, happy anniversary. That. No, thank you. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, I didn't forget it. Shit in your I hat. didn't forget it. No. Uh, hey, we do need to talk about. What happened over the weekend? We're going to watch this old Nitro, but boy, we we saw some really special stuff happen over the weekend that I just don't think we can let pass us by. What looks like perhaps might actually be the end of Brian Danielson's in-ring career, and a lot of speculation will be the end of his full-time career, and of course, Harry Funk would probably advise us to never say never, but mm. what a brutal scene to close Wrestle Dream. Normally, as a rule of thumb, AEW sends them home happy. We've got a nice feel-good moment. That's certainly the way we close the show at Wembley Stadium, the biggest show of the year for AEW. And that's where Brian Danielson captured the AEW world title. And he lost it this past weekend in pretty devastating fashion. I mean, just brutal and the betrayal. Goodness gracious, what a way to close the show and what a way to close Brian Danielson's career. You were there. You had a front row seat. What'd you think? Mm. Uh, I, uh, I, the only thing I think about right now at this time is how lucky I've, I've talked to you about this, about me feeling lucky, uh, about, uh, feeling lucky about, well, first of all, I feel very lucky about, you know, being a part of Ric Flair's career and being able to hold the microphone for him. And, but then again, we flash forward to, to what is uh, the modern day wrestling. And I feel very fortunate to have uh, been there for Brian Danielson's, probably his, his last match, um, because he's got to get healthy. And um, I just, uh, to me, he's, am I wrong to say he's the best of all time? Is a, a man like me who has watched Ric Flair, who has seen Shawn Michaels, uh, Wrong to say that uh, Brian Danielson's the best of all time. You you think Brian Danielson's above Sean or above Rick, above Brett, above everybody else? Brian Danielson's yeah. the number one for you. Yes, for me. Wow, wow, that's uh, that's pretty strong, man. Not a lot of people would say that. I uh, he's always been one of my favorites, going back to like '04. But when you start to say, "Boy, he's better than all the others." I mean, that includes the Chris Benoit's and the Andy Guerrero's and the Kurt Angles. And my goodness, that's a, quite a compliment there for your pal and maybe former coworker, Brian Danielson. You know, what do you think is next, man? I mean, the ultimate betrayal to me is, is Wheeler Yuta. I, I can't say that I saw that coming. It did feel like that was going to happen. It would have happened already. And the hometown crowd there, just 78 miles from his home place, did not go home happy on Saturday. What a spectacle. No, they didn't. And, you know, the old thing is uh, to send them home happy. Uh, and I guess we decided not to do that. Um, I guess a, a part of that, as much as anything else, is the fact that knowing that Brian is really worn down. Uh, and he, he may not. I, I don't know. I, I say, I don't know if Brian's going to wrestle again or not. But I don't know he needs to rest. And he mentioned on TV that. He's going to need surgery before the year is up. Uh, so I really don't know if he's going to wrestle again or not. But but I do know, man, he needed to slow down. You know, he yeah. just he just he just did. And 
I, I talk to Brian a lot backstage and tell him all the time, number one, how awesome he is. And number two, how concerned I am for him. Because for instance, he goes out and he wrestles Okada. Yeah. Right before he goes to wrestle John Moxley. It's like, dude, slow down. And I don't think the guy knows how to slow down. Hopefully this will slow him down or at least make him uh, take a break for a little while. But I still think he's the best. And I think he's the best because of uh, just being a number one guy, just being a stand-up great guy and a, a guy who really knows, is really smart in the business ways. Tony, you know, Tony Khan, you know, depends on him for a lot. Uh, he really is one of the best hires that we've had since I've been a part of AEW. And uh, what a... <sighs> I, I don't know what else to say about him, but it's just tremendous. He really is. I'm excited to see what's next for Brian Daniels. And, you know, if that was the end of his full-time in-ring career, what he continues to do for AEW and, and with the rest of his life, maybe even outside of wrestling, it's going to be interesting. But when we're thinking about what a fourth reign for John Moxley might be, there had never been a three-time champion when Moxley became the AEW champ for the third time. And now he's lapped everybody. He is a four-time AEW champ. They threw the belt in the uh, black bag and scurried away. Man, uh, what do you think's next with Mox here, dude? Well, Mox has been talking in riddles. I've said that many times on television. Uh, John is, you know, John had told me that this is a very important part time in AEW. Uh, he's confided that with me. Uh, what he means by that, I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, you know, there was a time that I thought that John Moxley was AEW's version of Stone Cold Steve Austin. And in many ways, we you could draw the parallels. Not so sure that everybody buys into that or not, but there's a thought out there with that. I just uh I I, I just don't honestly don't know what what where we're doing with this, where we're going with this. I'm sure you've seen some of the crazy out there tinfoil hat ideas. No, I've not. Well, there is a contingent of uh, people online of rather smart wrestling fans that I know who tend to think that this is to introduce that Shane McMahon may be involved with AEW. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. Well, it's just really hard for me to imagine, but I guess it's wrestling. You never say never in wrestling, right, Tony? Right, that's true. That's true. I, I say I don't think that's the case, and I could be wrong tomorrow. I, you know, I, I look, I work in talent relations. I help with pre-tapes during the day, um, and I, I do the announcing when the show's on the air. That's about the extent of what I do. I don't sit in Tony's office. I don't want to know what the dirt is, or I don't even want to know what, what the inside scoop is as far as where is this angle going. As an announcer, I just want to... I don't mind knowing where the match is going, but as far as where angles are going furthering, I don't, I don't, I don't need to know that, and I think it's good I don't know that, so... I agree. I think it's great that you don't know that. But one thing I know for sure is that you know all about Magic Spoon. And you know how we mm, both sure love do. eating cereal. But now as adults, we realize, man, we don't need all that you sugar. Know what's all up? You know what's all about that? Uh, Are you okay, Tony? Yep. Do you want to tell us about Magic Spoon? Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Like, What do you like about that shit? Well, here's what I like. Uh, I like the uh, peanut butter and chocolate treats. Oh, God. I like the, I like the marshmallow treats. I oh. like the blueberry treats. I like the double chocolate treats. You can buy them in boxes of four, and you can buy them in boxes for Kroger. And I pile up on them, and I eat about two a day. Dude, I eat uh, one for breakfast, and I one, you know, went one after dinner for my dessert. How's that for you? I just smashed two blueberry ones tonight after dinner did myself. You really? I absolutely did, man. It is my go-to. And I got to say, double chocolate's got to be my favorite. What we're talking okay. about, if you're already a fan of Magic Spoon, is the big news. Magic Spoon has turned their super popular cereal into high-protein treats that are light, crispy, and taste just like the classic crunchy cereal bars that we all grew up on. Magic Spoon's brand new treats are so delicious. They really are my go-to now. My wife even rocks these as like a, a pre-workout. 
And it's because every serving of Magic Spoon cereal has 13 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar, and four grams of net carbs. So you can feel good about what you're eating. The most popular flavors are fruity and cocoa, but there's so many more. Magic Spoon's brand new treats, as I said, are crispy, crunchy, airy, and an easy way to get 12 grams of protein on the go. And for the first time ever, as you heard Tony say, Magic Spoon treats are available in grocery stores with delicious flavors like marshmallow and chocolatey peanut butter. Tony rattled off all of the uh, flavors, and I think chocolate, double chocolate's my favorite. Chocolatey peanut butter and the marshmallow are almost tied. Blueberry's still great. I just crushed two. I love them. But mm. uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Get $5 off your next order at magicspoon.com slash WHW. Or look for Magic Spoon on Amazon or in your nearest grocery store. That's magicspoon.com slash WHW for $5 off. Magic Spoon, hold on to the dream. So listen, man, there was a lot more that happened at Wrestle Dream than just the main event. I think one of the matches everybody was talking about when it was all said and over is Takeshita in that three-way with Will Ospreay and Ricochet. I mean, people were, were talking about this match as if this match happened in the future. And we were fortunate enough to get a peek. Lots of crazy stuff in this one. What'd you think, Tony? I thought the Kesta was uh I thought the Kesta was kind of the the Kesta was kind of the star of the show. Wow. I, I really did. I, I mean, we look, Will Ospreay, we have seen a lot of his stuff and and we have seen a lot of Ricochet stuff. I mean, they do things that are phenomenal, but Takesha would really, to me, I, I just, I have, I have a lot of time for Takesha, man. A lot of time. I, and I just, of course, you know, that ball hit at prick got involved as well. Don Calais. And, uh, that was uh, kind of a, a sour taste in my mouth, but I thought Takesha did some great shit, man. You know what else? Who else I thought did some great, great stuff, and I was very proud of was Private Party. Oh yeah, absolutely. They had a great showing against the Young Bucks over the weekend. Yes, they did. And you know they they came out and they, uh, well they they didn't they didn't receive the big pop. Yeah. And uh, but by the time it was all over with, fans were with it. Fans were with it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'll be honest. I, I've even seen that recently with the young bucks. It wasn't that long ago. We saw the young bucks, uh, have a fantastic match, but man, it was grand slam. And I, I was sort of nonplussed with the crowd response for the young bucks. And I was like, man, maybe fans just don't want them to be heels, but then I yeah. couldn't help, but note by the end of the match, man, everybody in the place was standing. Like they won everybody over. They do every time. I feel like that's like a young buck special. And I do wonder like at what point, because on some level, I still think with all their accolades, I still think they might be overrated. I mean, underrated. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I feel like there's so much negativity and so much anti AEW bias that some of that sort of spills over onto the Young Bucks, and it's like, man, whoever saw a bad Young Buck match, I don't think they, I don't think they exist. No, I, I, I agree with that, and. Talk to me about this so much AEW negativity. Well, you know, listen, there's a whole lot of silly tribalism that only exists with a certain section of fans online. It doesn't exist in real life. Like, it's not like the guys in the AEW locker room hate the guys in the WWE locker room or vice versa. They're all coworkers. They're all colleagues. They're all trying to pull in the same direction. Like, what's good for WWE in a weird way is good for AEW. I mean, of it's course. the wrestling industry. And I think. Fans sometimes think that the talent go home and sleep under an AEW blanket or a WWE blanket, but that's just not reality. Like this is their job. And, you know, to make the hamburger analogy, if hey, you've got a successful McDonald's, you're running a successful McDonald's franchise and you're the GM, but Burger King offers you a raise with a better schedule, you work first shift instead of second, then you take it not to make a silly burger analogy, but it's the same thing on some level, just presented differently. And I think there's a lot of people who think, well, the young bucks aren't shit because they're not on WWE. And I just don't think that's fair. No, that's, that's not fair. And of course that's, that's fans who are, who are number one idiots. 
But number two, do you think a lot of that is real? Oh, that's right. You're a bot guy. You think that there's a lot of bots. There are a lot of bots out there. I'm not arguing that there's not bots. Right. Not only bots, do you think they just, you know, they're just being, trying to be. Contrarian. They're yes. trying to be edgy. Yes, exactly. I could see that. I definitely yeah, think I some of that exists. Like it, it has become, and I don't know how this happened, but it's kind of become in fashion to shit on AEW. Like. And I just never get got that. Like my dad, whenever he's critical of Alabama's football play, he takes no joy in it. It's painstaking. Damn it. We got to get our secondary to get, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, these guys are the shits. I mean, right. <laughs> we just don't, it's just weird that that only seemingly exists in wrestling. Yeah, it is. Well, that's the nature of what we got. That's the business we're in. So let's move forward with that. Uh, because, you know, I, uh, I personally uh, stay away from that stuff because I don't want it to affect my work at all. I don't want the few. And believe you me, it's in compared to the actual world. Yes. It's the few. Yes. I, I don't want the few to uh, their negativity nor their ideas on creative uh, to influence what I'm doing as far as my job is concerned. And I've, I've been told now that isn't Twitter or X going to, you can't block people anymore. Oh, I don't know. I, I I've been blocking motherfuckers left and right. I don't think that's I heard case. that that soon you won't be able to block or mute people anymore. Oh, wow. And That'll, if that, if that is the case, I'm going to completely leave Twitter. There'll be a lot of people. I think. Yeah. Right. Well, I tell you what I'm not leaving. And that's uh, this leaving? conversation without talking about Adam Cole, baby. We heard mm -hmm. a little tease and he is back. We saw the return of MJF and the return of Adam Cole. Uh, man, I, what, a, what an ovation. What a response that Adam Cole got, right? Yeah, Adam Cole got uh, what I think was a, a deserved response. Uh, you know, the kid is, uh, it is, number one, a great kid. Number two, a fine performer. And number three, and most importantly, God, he's gone through so much. Yeah. In injury wise, with concussions and a broken ankle that he suffered last year during uh the uh the Grand Slam event in New York. So you just you just got a pull for him. And he got a great response. And I think it's good to have him back. Uh the flip side is uh, you know, uh it's uh not good to have MJF back. Well, truer words yeah. have never been spoken. Just a turd human being. But hey, you used to talk a lot of trash about Adam Cole and saying you could beat his ass in video games. Is that, you still believe that? You still standing on business or is that cap? Well, you know what? I have not, uh, I have not um, played video games in quite a while. So I don't know. With video games, it's kind of like any activity. You kind of got, be doing it on a regular basis, get good at it. And there was one time on Halo that I really thought really thought that I was pretty good at Halo. And Halo's his his go-to game as well. But I haven't played Halo in six months, so I don't know. I don't know if I am or not. Do you play uh, NBA 2K? No, nah, I don't play that shit. Okay. Well, if you ever I decide kill, to... I want to I I kill people, okay? And that's what you do on Halo. You kill people. Or you kill aliens. Put it that way. I want to shoot... I, wanna, I don't want to... I don't want to play a basketball game or a football game or a baseball game that I can not watch on TV. I want to shoot somebody. Does that make sense? Uh, that's pretty aggressive, Tony. <laughs> you think I'm aggressive? How about the guys that play uh, Grand Theft Auto? You don't do that? No, I don't do that. I haven't done that. Mm -mm. Have yes. you never played Grand Theft Auto? I tried, but I couldn't control the car. I wrecked it and everything, and I went, eh, fuck it. Even though I bought it, I played it for maybe five minutes and that was it. In the five minutes, did you, um, put a hooker in the I, car? I wrecked the car. I couldn't get anywhere in the car. Oh, you couldn't bait the hookers no. to come to the car. No, you're supposed to drive somewhere, right? Oh, I don't know. I've never played. Yeah. I just know that there's a lot of hooker sex. Okay. In cars. Here's what I, here's what I did. I started in and we robbed something and we killed a bunch of cops and we got in the car and we took off and I wrecked. And I said, fuck it. And I tried it again and I wrecked again. And uh, just, 
That was it. Tony, Not for me. What you just said is the headline for 411 fuck cheat tomorrow. Above the <laughs> fold. So I killed a bunch of cops. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was in Grand Theft Auto, you bunch of 411 fuck sheet idiots. I love you for that. Oh my God. Hey, by the way, uh, we appreciate yeah, you guys listening to what happened when, but when you're finished with this podcast, how about another great wrestling podcast? Have you checked out our buddy, Chris Van Vliet's podcast? It's called insight with Chris Van Vliet. And he does some of the more interesting and in-depth wrestling interviews that you'll find anywhere. Chris always asks great questions and he really allows his guests to open up and tell stories you've never heard before. And man, he's been on a roll recently. He's had the undertaker. And Cody Rhodes and Drew McIntyre and even Jesse Ventura and Christian Cage and Adam Copeland. It's a who's who. I've even been a guest on there too. Highly recommend it. If you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Look for Insight with Chris Van Vliet on YouTube as well as Spotify, Apple, or wherever you're listening to this. That's Chris Van Vliet, V L I E T. You met Chris before? He's a nice guy, isn't he? I think I met him at a uh, at a convention. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he seems to be a nice guy. From what I've, I only talked to him briefly, so I don't know. Yeah. Well, we if hope he's, he's a nice guy. I mean, if he's murdering children, you know, we'll have yeah. to we'll have to let you know. We will, yeah, we'll have to let you know on that. <laughs> you would probably know before we we would. Okay. I hope he's not murdering my kids. I don't think he's murdering anybody, but just go listen to his podcast to keep an eye on things just in case. Hey, well, speak- if he's playing Halo, he's murdering aliens. If he's playing Grand Threat Thought, if he's playing that game, he's probably killing cops, right? Sounds like you got some of the drugs out of Grand Theft Auto yeah. before we clicked record. Yeah. Hey, like uh, we were talking about nice guys, what a nice guy Chris Van Vliet is. I kind of feel like Zack Sabre Jr. is a pretty nice guy, too. I don't know if you saw, but over the weekend... My man won the uh, New Japan World Title. Did you see that? Mm-mm. Yeah, he's the new New oh, Japan champion. He beat NATO. I don't see anything. So, uh, no, I don't. I didn't. Well, that's good. Yeah, he is a good kid and a very, very accomplished wrestler. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed the times I've worked with him. You know, on our Forbidden Door events, and he's been at a couple of our shows. Good kid. Very happy for him. Are you familiar with the name Tanahashi? Yes. He announced he's retiring. Wrestle Kingdom will be his last match. Not this coming well, he, Wrestle Kingdom, but 2026. But he's the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling right now. He right? is indeed. Yes, sir. The former yeah. champ and the president. Yeah, well, there you go, right? Why not retire? You run the company. Think that could be a Brian Danielson move one day? How great mm-hmm. would he be? He'd be the, he'd be the, I'd work for Brian, with Brian, for Brian Danielson any day of the week. I really would. It's a nice testimony. But no, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I mean, he may have down the road of a very, very big position in our company, but to run the company. No, uh, this is Tony Khan's company and he's always going to run it. Well, I, uh, I want to run something right now because we recently did something here on the show that, uh, got you tickled. And I thought, you know what, let's just, let's run it back. Let's bring on a special guest. And I've learned since this fine young woman is from Alabama. Let's take a listen. Got a dick in my nightstand. I can use with my left hand. When I'm alone, it always treats me right. Never too tired on a Friday night. Does it ever get old, Tony? No, it doesn't get old. And of course, she's from Alabama. <laughs> Doesn't that sound and look like Alabama to you? I think she's lip syncing, Tony. I don't think that's the actual performer, but that video in particular really just gets oh, all over. Oh, that, that's not her. I thought. I thought maybe that that uh, young lady had a great voice. Wow. Speaking of great voices, I got another interesting voicemail I'd like to play for you. Can I play it? Can I share a voicemail with you? <sighs> sure. This is real. I promise. I'm sure it is. I'm Let's sure take a listen. Is. Well, I'm 
That was the voicemail I got from Eric Bischoff when it was announced that AEW had signed a renewal with Warner Brothers Discovery. <laughs> Can you believe that voicemail, dude? I didn't understand hardly any of it. I heard Ric Flair and AEW. That's all I heard. And I don't think it was positive. Okay. I'm pretty sure no, it, it wasn't, wasn't a compliment. Okay. Did you... First of all, you better watch who you give your number to. That's I didn't give my number to that person. They found it, which is fine. Okay. Did you find out who this person was? I know their name. That's all you know. I know their first name. But that's all you know. You don't yeah. know where they live. I mean, yeah, I know the city based on the caller ID. Okay. I guess it could be spoofed, but I think he's from Maryland. Okay. That's a little weird. Would you agree? I'll just, that's, that's, uh, to me, that's like almost harassment. I don't know. I just think we should find out where he lives and go rolling. Now, when you say rolling, do you mean like in Grand Theft Audio where we're going to shoot the cops and all no. that? No. I, Cause no, I don't like want to do any cop shooting. Knock on the door. No, like knock on his door and he comes to the door. We just pull him out the front door as he walks to the door and roll him down the front steps. And as he's laying there gasping for air on the sidewalk, look at him, spit between his eyes and say, never call Conrad again and just walk away. Hmm. That's what you call rolling. I forgot. You're uh, Italian. And from Craigsville, Virginia. Yes. Okay. Ooh, from West Virginia. Boys we rolled a lot around. of people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, they do after they've seen us. They fuck around, go right back to the mountains. Well, we're going to fuck around and watch hey. a little Nitro here. I want you to get ready. We're uh, we're not there yet, but we're not far away from watching Nitro from October 16th, 1995. It's season one, episode seven. This is actually predating Tony Schiavone doing commentary on the show. So Eric Bischoff, Bobby Heenan, right. and Steve McMichael are going to be in the booth. They're live from Albany, Georgia. Get ready. October 16th, 1995 mm -hmm. on Peacock. It's season one, episode seven. I didn't mean to cut you off there, Tony. Mm -hmm. No, I was saying, while you're getting ready, I, I do have, want to talk about my little side venture that I had uh, while we were in Seattle this weekend. Um, there is a, uh, there's a place in Seattle called Motley Zoo. It's an animal rescue. Uh, first of all, uh, we had, uh, th these are two different separate things I'm going to talk about. Number one, we had a lot of our wrestlers go uh, to a, uh, an animal shelter. Uh, and uh, help out the animal shelter and feed the animals and work with them and get wait, some pictures wait, taken. Wait, wait, wait. The wrestlers weren't eating the dogs, were they? No, no, no. no. Okay, good. They were not. <laughs> anyway, Motley Zoo Animal Rescue is is a uh, animal rescue company that uh, is rock and roll based. Uh, a lot of rock and rollers have gotten their dogs there. Robert Plan got his dog there. Uh, I think there's a couple of others. Uh, they do have an, uh, an Instagram page. So uh, Soraya got her dog there. And I asked about it and she said, yeah, they've got a lot of chihuahuas. So I, I, I contacted uh, the girl who works at uh, Motley Zoo. And after the show on Saturday night, uh, she arrived to the hotel with this. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Those are two chihuahuas. One, and oddly enough, we were talking about Halo. They named uh, this uh, dogs in this litter after Halo characters. 
Wow. So the girl on my right, on the left as you're looking at it, is named Cortana. And the little girl on the right is named Kelly. And uh, I couldn't pick them up because they got to get their health certificates, but she brought them out for me to see them. And now I've got to decide which one I want. And uh, then I'll fly back out to Seattle and, and pick it, pick up the dog. Good for you, Tony. That's awesome. What, I mean, have you thought about with Lois, like which one? Or have y'all talked about that? Or She's like, she's kind of edgy about it. She's not so sure she really wants this to happen because uh, Scout can be a little much. And so she's not so sure she wants another dog. And she, like me, is uh, she's it's still morning bug. Yeah. And it's so it's tough. And, you know, uh, my son Matt was there uh, and we both were holding the dogs and talking to this lady at the hotel. And we spent about 45 minutes to an hour with these dogs. And we, ha- we would hand them back and f- back off and forth. And I said, Matt, which one of these dogs would you come home with? He said, well, you could always come home with, bo- with both. What would mom say? She wouldn't make you take one back. Sure. And I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, I'll be honest. When both popped up there, I thought that's where you were going. I went out there to get one dog and I got two. So I've been told by, uh, by Motley Crew, uh, Motley Crew, Motley Zoo Animal Rescue, decide which one. And then I'll go back on a Monday. You know, I'll fly the five hours up, get the dog, fly the five hours back. And, um, uh, and yeah, I've had some people ask me, well, aren't they, aren't there, uh, chihuahuas in the Atlanta area? I'll go, yeah, there are, but something about these people and what they do and how, uh, how, and I, and I told the girl, I said, I'm going to, we're driving out. It was an hour drive from, uh, her location to, uh, to the hotel. I gave them a, a, a donation for her time. And, uh. I just, I just like what they do. I like how they do it. And, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful what all dog rescues do. Uh, but, um, that especially. So there you go. (sighs) I'm going to get another Chihuahua eventually. And you're thinking a girl this time. Yeah. Cause I want to name her ladybug. Okay. That's where I was going. You got a name picked out. Why ladybug? Well, there was bug. Oh, damn it. Duh, it was right there. I was trying to get set up for, is that a family name? And you <laughs> just went right to it. But man, Ladybug after Bug, right. that's hard to beat. Right. I love that. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So that's probably what it's going to be. Although I can tell you right now that Cortana is a pretty cool name too. I like that. So that has a, that strikes a chord with me as far as uh, Halo is concerned and the video game. So. There you go. Speaking of video games, let's do some questions here. We're just uh, moments away from watching this old Nitro. It's uh, season one, episode seven. Join us over on Peacock. Megan mm-hmm. Nelson is with us here live, part of our live studio audience. And she says, hey, Megan. your son, Tim, said in the day after getting in trouble, he'd go to his room and play the WCW video game and whack you with chairs, LOL. Mm-hmm. How yeah. great is that? Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, a little prick. I don't know why, but it makes me laugh to hear you say prick. Uh, Bobby is with us, and he wants to know, mm-hmm. what was the biggest change from when you went from JCP to WCW? Uh, wow. Well, well, Bobby, the biggest change for me was when I went from JCP to WWF. That was the big change. And then when I went to WCW, okay, so JCP is here as far as uh, an organization, as far as the size of an organization as far as being organized. And then WWF was way up here. So that was the biggest change. Production standards, being able to put together a TV show, the staff that was able to put together a TV show, the infrastructure of the company. Much bigger than, uh, than JCP. And then when I, when I go to WCW, we go back down here again because it was it was just a fucked up place from the word go. So there you go. That's uh, that was the biggest change. The infrastructure. Aaron Sheen is with us and wants to know, have you been keeping up with football and MLB postseason? That's interesting. This weekend, it's going to be a big game, Georgia, Texas, 
Mm-hmm. What do you think happens this weekend, Georgia and Texas? Uh, I don't know. Don't really care. I haven't been keeping up with it at all. Um, I just get, I get the scores. I'll check ESPN app and check on the scores. Uh, I haven't watched any of the baseball playoffs. I haven't watched any baseball game at all this year. None. Wow. Uh, and I I very rarely have watched any Georgia football. I think uh, maybe I watched a couple of plays of the Auburn game at the beginning or at the end or something. I can't remember. You know, a lot of times we work on Saturdays too. Yeah. Uh, so I just, uh, I don't give a shit. I really don't. I'm, I'm just... I, I don't care for it. I don't watch it. I, I, I'm, I'm the type of person that thinks that, uh, that college football has jumped the shark. And uh, with all this NIL stuff, do you know I heard, I don't know if this is true, you may know this, but Carson Beck, the quarterback yeah. of the Georgia Bulldogs, drives a Ferrari. Has a Lamborg- uh, I heard it was Lamborghini. It's well, a Ferrari. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, it's a Ferrari. What's wrong with that picture? Someone yeah. tell me what's wrong with that picture. Okay. Uh, that's just, that is so, and that it goes to show you that these kids are too young to get this type of money right now. But I've always been an advocate of college football players getting paid because the, the schools are making millions and millions and probably billions of dollars off of these TV rights. So you're lowest right now. You like it and you're glad it's happening, but you hate it. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't think it should be. I think it might be, should be put way in a trust fund for them. And once they get out of school, spend your money, you know? Uh, well, I think uh, Nick Saban suggested something not long ago. That's probably right yeah. on the money. We just got to have some sort of oversight. There's got to be some yeah. sort of a commissioner of all these sort of things. But yeah. I am shocked yeah. to hear that you're not keeping up with any postseason baseball. I know you say you don't None. give a shit, but let me just give you a heads up. The Mets and the Dodgers are tied at a game apiece, and the New York mm-hmm. Yankees are up over the Guardians one to nothing. And that mm-hmm. means that there is at least a chance that we might have a Subway series. I don't think we've had that since like 2000. 2000, we had it, yeah. So there's a chance. What do you think, man? Mets, don't Yankees. Care. You don't, don't think that'd be cool? No, I don't give a shit. Uh, they'll be the most overblown series ever because it's in New York. And and, you know, I, oddly enough, I remember when the last Subway Series was 2000, I watched games back when I was watching baseball. I watched games from my hotel room in Sydney, Australia at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I remember that distinctly. And, uh, I mean, I could tell you every World Series winner between 1955 and 2000, probably 2005, 2006. And then I started to tail off, probably 2007, I started to tail off after that. And I just don't give a shit anymore. And, and I think, I may be wrong, I, I think that fans have, fans are so terrible these days. I'm not, I, that they, they've, they've taken me out of it. It's the fans' fault? The fans are fucking you around? No, it's not the fans' fault. No, it's just, I just... I don't know. I, I can't. I can't put my hand on it. But I just. Let me. I let's... guess a part. I guess a part of me. It, it's kind of like Conrad when I left wrestling. You know, back in '01. Yeah. I wanted to forge ahead and do something. Disassociate. That, yeah, put the past behind me, so to speak. And I did baseball for eleven years with the Braves AAA team and I worked with the Atlanta Braves some. I did minor league baseball prior to that. I wanted to do baseball and now I just yeah. I mean I I could pro- I could go to a I could go to a uh, a Braves game and get great seats, you know, through the through Brian Snitker anytime I wanted to, but I just don't take advantage of that because I just don't want to go. There it is. And Mark Cyrus just said baseball is boring. Well, Mark, it's not boring, uh, but to each to his own, you know. Uh, to me, uh, NASCAR races are boring. Um, uh, let's see what else would be boring. Let me ask you this: Would you Cricket be interested? Would, be would you be interested in baseball again if now that Brian Danielson is no longer able to compete in ring, if he became a pinch hitter for the Yankees? I, I would I would I would watch the replay of him pinch hitting. Wow, 
See, that's 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 one of the things that's going on here. And, and I <clears throat> stay with me on this, okay? okay? All right. I used to watch a lot of baseball because you would watch the Saturday game of the week, and you would watch Monday night baseball when they came up with that, okay? And that would be it. Okay, that would be it. And baseball games were special. Now you can watch every fucking baseball game in the fucking world. I see. And you can, you can re-watch it in a shorter period of time. They, they just give you a shortened game now. It's like, oh, man. So it's like, okay, I've had enough. Okay? The baseball games are no longer special. Monday night football used to mean a lot. It doesn't mean shit anymore. It's just another game. There's a Thursday night game. There's a Sunday night game. And there's all the NFL games you want on the NFL Sunday ticket. It's just not what it was. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron Sheen said golf is boring. Yes, it is. Tennis is boring. Yes, it is. Cricket is boring. Yes, it is. Listen, we got some big questions that we got to get to the bottom of. <laughs> like Gavin, Gavin Napier, he, he's asking the question that we all want to know after seeing Jack Perry's promo last week on Dynamite. Gavin says, longtime listener, first time hog watcher, has Shibata dethroned Robert Fuller? Well, I'm not so sure anybody could dethrone Robert Fuller. Did they? Jump Rope Academy, man. Yeah. Lord Alfred Hayes is in that group, I've, I've been told. Uh, two Cold Scorpios in that group, I've been told. But uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, you heard about Shibata's hog. I guess Gavin wants to know, have you? I haven't heard about Shibata's hog. Who's, who? They talked about it on TV. It was on Dynamite last week. What did he? What exactly did he say? He said that he had a tree trunk in his pants. No, oh. a tree trunk, not yeah. the tree. Yeah, the trunk. The base of the trunk is pretty thick. You see. Okay. Okay. Well, that part of the the interview just went right over my head. Tony, that's crazy for me to think that you had one of your top stars, a pillar of AEW, go on primetime television. And talk about the girth of another man's cock. Mm -hmm. And you missed it. Yes, I did. You're a guy who, when Alex Wright comes through the curtain on Nitro, you're laser beamed in like the colonel checking out Dirk Diggler and Jack's pool party. Well, I am now, but I wasn't back then. I got work to do. I got serious work to do when I got the headset on. I can't get in these, these freaking games. So I guess I got to talk to Jack about that. No, you don't. Listen. Yes, I do. He can't say things like that on TV. Well, he did, and you didn't even. Well, he can't. That makes me he, a snitch now. Well, there you go. Don't be a snitch. I wasn't being a snitch. I was asking. You, were if snitch, you, could, you snitch just now. I wanted you to show us with your hands. I thought it was a roll of baloney or something. No, These are your phrases. You snitch. Okay. So I'm going to go to Jack. I said, Jack, I, I have to talk to you about what you said. I did not hear it. I didn't, but there's this snitch in a comrade Thompson. You mother that told me about it. Okay. There you go. Here's what here's here's what I need you to do. I need you to tell Shibata mm -hmm. all about Blue Chew. Okay. Because if he could go ahead and and get hooked up with our friends at Blue Chew, after he works with one of their medical advisors, mm -hmm. what if he popped a Woodrow during a match? Hmm. Be something else, wouldn't it? What if he gave him a special pair of trunks? And it said promo code WHW. That'd be great. And what if that episode, what if next week, what if to this week, Excalibur says it's Wednesday. You know what that means? Tony's ding dong so hard. Even a cat couldn't scratch it because he knows about blue chew. It's a unique online service that delivers you the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost and in a chewable form. And that's when you say that's exactly right. Excalibur. And then JR says, the process is simple. I signed up at bluechew.com. I consulted with one of their licensed medical providers. Once I was approved, I received my prescription within a few days. I felt good about it being an Okie from Muskogee because I knew these tablets were made in the USA and they were shipped and prepared directly to my door 
So that meant I didn't have to go talk to the doctor about my gimmick not being what it was when Stone Cold was stomping a hole and walking it dry. I didn't have to have an awkward conversation. That meant I could no longer yell, good God almighty, she's been broken in half. And I didn't have to wait in line at the pharmacy like Sonny did in 1997. It was all done online. I can take them anytime, day or night, so I can plan ahead or be ready whenever a co-ed needs a little extra cash on the weekends. I give her the code, punch her right up, and say, just back up into it, honey. Blue Chew wants you to have the confidence to perform at your best. So discover your options at BlueChew.com. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code WHW at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's BlueChew.com. The promo code is WHW, and you receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. So I should say something to him like this. And what does that say? Uh, it said uh, Shibata. Oh, I lost it now. It says, Shibata, we want to offer you Blue Chew. Go to bluechew.com. Use the promo code WHW. And then you're going to fuck her so Something good. Tree. The whole crowd's going to start chanting. Mm-hmm. Tree trunk. No, Tree trunk. No, no. We started the show with it. You forgot Blue again, Chew. didn't you? Blue. Yeah, I did. Tony Khan standing on stage and he looks at you hoping that you'll start the chant, which sounds a lot like Ichi. I forgot it already. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Ichi ni sanda. That's tough, bud. I'd have lost that too. Here's what I haven't lost. Season one, episode seven of Nitro. This is going to be a lot of fun. I, for one, am looking forward to this. Tony, I, uh, I'm locked and loaded and ready to go on my side. You got everything fired down on your side? I hope to. I, we got a uh, countdown from Adam Die. Okay. And I think I have this plugged into our system. I'm not sure. I heard it during the commercial for Magic okay, Spoon, so, so it's there. It's, but I, don't, I think I downloaded it, and I hope I did. Hope I got the right one. Here we go. And I hope it's not that obscene because, you know, we don't like obscene stuff here on this program. Not one fucking bit. Okay. So here we go. Yep. You know what's all about that? Oh, I'm sorry. That's not it. That's that El Corai. That was James El Corai's one. So see, it didn't work. Let me try this one. Nope, that didn't work either. Well, you know what I got? So- See, I don't have to. I don't have to. I don't know how to use this machine yet. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna let Big Daddy Mark sing us out, and then I'm gonna go one, two, three, play. How's that sound? Let me try one more time. Okay. Nope, didn't work. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's let's go, with Big Daddy Mark. Here we go. Out. No time. No, no, no. Bad bitches is the only thing that I like. You ain't got no life. No, no, no. Cups with the ice, and we do this every night. I ain't checked the price. I got it, got it. I make my own money, so I spend it how I like. I'm just living life. And let my mama tell it, nigga, I ain't living right. Uh, Chop and top of the porch as a headless horse. Hey, hey. Extended long extension course. Hey, hard, hard. It's a boy joy, and I play full court. If you're not my type, then you know I gotta keep this shit short. short. Hey. What you know about check? What you got in your pocket? What you spend when you shop a dog? Uh? Why you wanna go play? Play you all in the mix? Why you wanna go popping off? Uh? I got some models so you see up in the hey. money, and they wanna make a flick for the camera. Yeah. Wanna be Kip Kardashian? Heard I was living like a bachelor. I ain't got no time. No, no, no. Bad bitches is the only thing that I like. Oh. You ain't got no love. No, no, no. Cups with the ice, and we do this every night. Hey. I ain't check the price. 
In three, two, one, play. Man. I couldn't understand a word he was saying. He's saying he ain't got no type. Bad bitches is the only thing that he liked. Okay. You ain't got no bad bitches, Tony? No. She it. I bet every time you get to TV, they're just lined up to get a hug. Wrong. Hey, I love this. Uh, love this open. Always did. That's the only thing I loved about our show. That's the only thing you loved about the show? Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the greatest night in the history of our great sport. Oh, no. Coming to you once again show. live, as live can be. It's WCW Monday Nitro, and I'm Eric Bischoff. So this was like, what, Nitro, what? Number, number seven. Number seven. Number seven? Number seven? E. Yep. You yep. Started, started Labor Day, so this is uh, mid-October. Mm-hmm. So we're, uh, we're home stretching to Halloween Havoc, where the Yeti's going to buttfuck Hulk Hogan. How about that dog? Yeah, Pepe. What a great dog, dude. Yeah. An old chihuahua, bless his heart. Oh, my God. Think about this. Mongo, man. Not doing the best in the world. No, he's ter- He's in terrible shape. Pepe no longer with us, I'm sure. I'm just guessing. Well, of course. Pretty, pretty fair assumption. Yeah. And Bobby Heenan. Yeah. No longer with us. Eric Bischoff has gray hair. And no patience for any of you. <laughs> I've had so much fun busting his balls about that. Mm-hmm. Man, how great does Ric Flair right here looks like he is a movie villain. Like he's got a problem at the country club with Chevy Chase and they're going to get it straight over 18 holes. That blue wow. jacket. Those shades on inside. That's a true asshole move. How often do you wear your shades on inside? <laughs> well, he's he will warm in the studio sometimes too. You know, right? I mean, the old Turner Studio. I'm just saying that's heat, right? If you see a son oh, of, of a bitch heat. walking through Walmart with sunglasses on, you're like, what a fucking asshole. No, yeah. I do like the way you you guys shine the logo on the floor. That was a cool effect for 1995, dude. Sure was. Yeah. This looks so much bigger than a Monday Night Raw right here to me. Just the set, the staging, and the lighting, and all that. Man. Oh, here comes Perfect Ten, Kimberly. He was a 10. Look at how goofy Diamond Dallas Page is. This is before he figured it out. Right. He started figuring it out in 96, got hot in 97. I mean, but that gear and just gimmick overload, chewing gum, smoking a cigar with a toothpick. And sunglasses, tape on every Damn finger, <laughs> a jacket, <laughs> a top. And and by the way, the gear, I mean, when he was when he just went to regular black trucks or even for a while there at 97, most of 97 just wearing jeans. Yeah, that looked awesome. But what he's wearing right now, man, looks like he made it, laid it out on the kitchen table, ran a hot glue gun across it. Ran a quick, had a quick little run through the uh, Hobby Lobby. So we saw a little flying with Johnny B. Bad knocking him out with a left hand punch. As he does. As he does. Dave Penzer is your ring announcer. By the way, uh, somehow, some way in the recap that was provided for us for today's episode, there is a record listed for each performer. So Johnny B. Bad this year was 45 and 2. And DDP was 19, one and two DDP comes in as the television champion. The television championship is on the line here in the, the opener. This is the era of a, an hour long nitro. What do you think about an hour long nitro? It leaves them wanting more, right? Yeah, sure. It does. And then we blossomed it to three hours, which, uh, had them wanting less. Uh, that's us in the front office, I should say. <laughs> Three hour TV show is like, yikes. Just too much. Hey, I wanted to, uh, ask you as we're watching a uh, pretty interesting open here to DDP and Johnny B. Bad. We saw you handle the, uh, the press conference after the pay-per-view. Normally that's something that Tony Khan handles. It was cool to see you. Uh, doing that, what you? What was your experience like? Your first time doing the uh, presser like that? 
it was pretty cool because we only had three guests and uh, the uh, crowd, uh, the uh, media in attendance uh, was very thin because we're all the way out in Seattle, right? Yep. It was very thin. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I really did. I didn't think I would, but I did working with, uh, you know, our PR guys and uh, sitting up there with Don Callis. I don't know if you listen to Don Callis. <laughs> oh, Don Callis makes me laugh. Um, and he told me afterwards, he said, why do we cut it short? I had 30 more minutes of material. <laughs> I said, get out of here. And when he said Dave Melty, when he told uh, uh, Alvarez, he said, tell, Dave, tell Melcher to get out his, his uh, typewriter. I'm thinking, who has a typewriter anymore, you fucking dumbass? Well, it's because the early episodes, or issues rather, were in typewriter. Were in yeah. typewriter. It's hilarious. Yeah. He's yeah. been doing it that long. Right. And then, of course, Mariah uh, was out there, and, uh, and that was cool. And uh, Man, she cut a promo, didn't she? Yeah, boy. She's a... We've, we, found, uh, we found quite a women's star there. Yeah. We really have. We really have. And, uh, I mean, she, she just... Oh, my God. Oh, look at this. How about oh, we're it? Heading to, we're heading to the monster truck. Yeah, man. This is oh. this is two weeks before the monster trucks and giant getting thrown off the top and the Yeti coming down and butt fucking Hulk Hogan. There's a lot of stuff oh. going on. Oh God. And the the uh the dungeon of doom and oh great shit, man. <laughs> really great shit. Speaking of great shit, guess what's coming up next, dude? Uh, look like from what I saw, it's Benoit against Indy Guerrero. You got it. Yeah. How fun is that, dude? Wow. Wow, Indy Guerrero. Fresh off of working the uh, ticket taker at the Gravitron. Ready to roll. <laughs> By the way, at Bad Money Slim is with us here tonight. Shout out to Bad Money. And he says, I think Tony did a phenomenal job at the press conference on Sunday night. <laughs> Greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Bad Money. You are true. To your word, and you're an honest man. I appreciate that. Wow, a compliment. So what, was that, what, is that, what did that sound that you made, you, you, uh, you lame brain? You made a sound. You talking to Silva? No, I'm talking to you. I didn't make any sounds. Okay. Uh, Here comes your favorite wrestler of all time, Chris Benoit. Stepping through the ropes. I know you think uh, he's the greatest wrestler of all time. You made that clear earlier today. I did not, and he, you a lie. You said that he... Uh, you know, you're an Alabama lie. Whatever's coming out of your mouth next is a big old fat turd Alabama lie. Go ahead. You know, if we were behind the paywall, I had a really good joke, and now I know this would go on RSS, so I just had to keep it to myself. But remind okay. me when next time we talk off air about okay. the Chris Benoit okay. match, because I had a joke that you just you can't possibly say out loud in public right now. Thank, thank God. Yep. Mm. Bobby wants to know, I uh, asked Tony, if you'd been hired as executive producer instead of Eric Bischoff, where would JR and Bischoff have fit in? Do you think he would have left for WWE? No, not at all, because I think I would have kept JR on and uh, had him be, uh, had he and Eric been, been our lead announcers, I think. But you know what, Bobby, uh, let's go back to say, if you'd been hired as executive producer, I never wanted that job. Never wanted it. And I knew after talking to Eric Bischoff that he was the right man for the job. There was no question. I mean, there was a, he had a plan. Uh, he was confident in being able to execute that plan. I was not. I didn't believe in the company because I knew it was a Turner company. And we, the people in Turner did not give a shit about us at all. Um, so I, uh, I knew we were on borrowed time. And I salute Eric Bischoff uh, for what he did in the barred time that we had. Bischoff during this match is mentioning that uh, WCW is looking to establish a cruiserweight division, which mm -hmm. is why Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit have come into the promotion. Right. And they're also pushing to call the hotline at 900-909-9900 to find out which WWF official left the company over the weekend. And how one of their superstars got in a fight with a fan in the parking lot and lost. 
Of course, the two okay. events they're talking about are Bill Watts quitting the World Wrestling Federation okay. and Shawn Michaels getting beat up by the Marines in Syracuse, New York. I don't know that story. So as the legend goes, and I'm sure I'm going to get a few facts wrong, but this is close enough for government work, as my grandfather used to say. Uh, Sean and the one, two, three kid and Davy boy Smith all pulled into a bar in Syracuse and Sean was looking to do what Sean liked to do, which was chat up some ladies. And those ladies liked being chatted up by the young, handsome, athletic television stars in their local watering hole. One of those ladies may or may not have been in a relationship with a Marine. Mm. And as you may have heard in those days, Shawn Michaels, well, he enjoyed some recreational habits that sometimes meant you weren't in total control of your faculties. Okay. And Shawn Michaels also, when he had a little bit of liquid fire water courage, he uh, maybe talked a little shit. Mm -hmm. And allegedly, his mouth wrote some checks that his ass could not cash. Especially when it was, depending on who you believe, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on one. So he got the shit beat out of him. And allegedly, as the story goes, mm -hmm. Bulldog was passed out in the front seat. And Sean Waltman was trying to go re make the hot tag and rescue him or vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it was a two seater and he couldn't get out until the guy in front of him Woke up. Got out of the car, but because he's passed out, we're just stuck now watching our friend toad and ass whooping. That is legendary, isn't it? Pretty crazy stuff. Mm. And it, get, it tells me once again that whether it happened nearly 30 years ago or this past Wednesday, you definitely don't listen to the commentary. <laughs> I sure don't. Mark Cyrus has a great question for you. He's a big fan. He says, why are you the best TV dad of all time? You consider yourself a TV dad. A lot of our listeners think of you as like their TV dad for wrestling. I don't know. Maybe so. Hmm. I, I don't, I don't consider myself a TV dad. TV dads are like Fred McMurray, my three sons, Dick Van Dyke, Dick Van Dyke show. Who else? Who was a TV dad in uh, Eight is Enough? Growing Pains. Growing Pains, those guys. Alan Thick, I think. Carl Winslow. Mm -hmm. James O'Connor. Yeah, I don't this know. This is that one. Uh, uh, Coach Keith just woke up, and uh, which is just right on time. Coach Keith, thanks for being around. Thanks for waking up. How, how the... Uh, how are the Raiders doing? Bill Cosby was another TV dad. Absolutely. I don't know that we're supposed to talk about him anymore. Oh, we're not? No. I think, I think all the rape has really affected his legacy. Well, there's no question it's affected his legacy. No question. I'm not here to defend him, but he was a TV dad at one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, our friend Michael Lawrence, friend of the show, Great comedian who does uh, wrestle roasts that you may have seen before. Go out of your way to check that I out. I not. He, uh, he posted something on Instagram over the weekend that I thought was a real wow moment. Remember the show Family Matters with the Urkel character? Yeah. So there was an episode towards the end of that season, on the very first season, where Carl Winslow, the cop dad, uh, the father on the show, Mm -hmm. uh, has a run in with Buddy Goodrich, who is a big stand up comedian turned host of a, or, or star of the number one television show where he plays a wealthy doctor who lives in an affluent neighborhood and fancy home, has adopted children, and he always corrects their shenanigans with some great fatherly advice, aka Bill Cosby with a different name. Mm hmm. And they expose in this episode of Family Matters what a great A asshole Buddy Goodrich is in real life. And it's nothing like what you see on TV. And that aired in 1989 on television. 
So really? at, at the time, the Cosby show was clearly the number one show in all of television. Mm-hmm. And Family Matters was probably seen like a, a poor man's Cosby show. Because here sure. it is, it's another startup sitcom about a, a, a black family in America in mm-hmm. a similar area or whatever. Except a different experience, more working class instead of, you know, uh, upper right. class or whatever. But I just thought it was interesting that this is years before we all found out what an asshole that Bill Cosby was. But somebody mm-hmm. knew back in 1989. Wow. Did they ever? It wow, was great. Cool. So I found it on Hulu. It's on there. I watched it. It's only 20 minutes without the commercials. It's great. And we're talking over a hell of a match here. If you were a fan of the cruiserweight division or of Eddie Guerrero or Chris Benoit or all three, this is pretty awesome stuff right here that we're watching. Yeah. Oh, and man. I don't think we've seen many dives out of the ring either. That's fair. Yeah. It's not that I don't like dives out of the ring. I think they have a place. I just think sometimes there are too many. James Elker, I actually has a question about that. Were you an immediate fan of cruiserweight stuff or did it have to grow on you? Like so many of the old school motherfuckers from the eighties. No, I loved it. Did old school motherfuckers not like the cruiserweight stuff? Cause to me, that was the closest thing to, I don't know. I just thought it was, it was great competitive wrestling. Like we're seeing right now. Right. It was. Well, I mean, I've heard Scott DeMore say something along the lines of Luthez thought that Harley race was killing the business. And then Harley race thought that, you know, Ric Flair was killing the business. Yeah. And then Ric Flair thought that Shawn Michaels was killing the business and <laughs> then Shawn Michaels. So, you know, it's just, it's always, everybody's pushing back on this evolution. Right. And there's a lot of fans on their feet and they have no idea in Albany, Georgia, who Chris Benoit is, but they know when they saw a damn good performance. Exactly. What a match for uh, Malenko and Guerrero. And it's on free TV. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see Mean Gene Okerlund coming up here in a minute. He's going to be interviewing the Giant and Kevin Sullivan. Now, there's a dive or a top rope. Launch it, I think you call it. I don't know what. I'm not so sure. By the way, in this, I know we're not going to be able to track it thanks to WWE not wanting us to promote their Peacock service. Um, but if we could track it, you would hear the Giant who appears to be nervous for his first live promo, warn Hulk Hogan that he plans to push him off the roof in their monster truck match. Mm. And, of course, we know it was actually the giant who got pushed off the roof. Yes, into the Detroit River, yeah, where he comes back alive and dry. And dry mm-hmm. <laughs> Dry is always the best part, isn't it? Yes, it's the best part. He got pushed off of the river, but he's dry. At least spray the hair down and put some seaweed in it or something, or moss or something. How about a fish flapping in his ear? I don't know. Uh, Gray asked us over on social media, how good looking does Tony think Johnny B. Bad was? Good looking? Yep. Handsome. He is a very handsome man. He looked like little Richard. He really did. And I was there when Dusty even said, looked at me, said, that's little Richard. That's what we're going to make him. Timothy Regal wants to know, what does Tony think Johnny B. Bad's future would have been in WCW? The gimmick feels like it wouldn't have fit in an NWO era. Oh, you can make anything work. Even if you think it doesn't feel right, if you got a guy that's going to put the effort into it and you've got bookers that are going to put the effort into it, you can make anything work. You know, you could have had him join the NWO, but still not want to dress in the black and white. And then they you know, eventually beat him up, throw him out, and he gets his retribution. You know, you could, I mean, I, I, I don't think, <clears throat> I, I think as a fan, you're wrong to say, mm, that doesn't feel like it's going to work because you can do anything. You can. It's like movies. It's like the Marvel movies, right? They killed off Iron Man, but they can bring him back. You just write it in. So I, I think as wrestling fans, I think you're wrong. And even, you know, you idiots on Twitter, you're wrong to think that that's never going to work again. Like you said earlier, a couple of times, Conrad, never say never in wrestling. Anything can work. Would you, would you take a look? 
What do you think? What do you think he's saying here? We got Mean Gene right in the middle. Oh, okay, he's about to put the microphone in front of the face of Kevin Sullivan. Mm-hmm. What do you think Kevin's yeah. saying here? Yeah. Well, Kevin's saying once the microphone gets in front of his face, he said, "Let me, let me." Okay, Gene's pointing at him right now. Uh, I, I may be behind. He says, "Let me tell you something, Mean Gene, about Tony Schiavone." Okay, my daughter the other day asked me. What do you call Tony Schiavone in real life? I call him a guinea, and I call him the human question mark. Because ever since he had that that neck surgery, his head has been over like he's in a question mark. So that's what he is, a human question mark. And you may want to ask me, what are these marks on my forehead? I don't know what these marks are on my forehead. I just come up with some shit. So I came up with a couple of lightning bolts. Put them right on top of my forehead, right between my eyes. And then I got these light. Don't look at the giant. Look at me. Then I put these lightning bolts on this robe. And I thought they they really should be the Red Sox colors, red and navy blue. But I went ahead with Hulk Hogan's colors because that's what this is all about. And people are wondering at me, Kevin, as a booker, why would you book it this way? Why would you book the Dungeon of Doom this way? Why not, Mean Gene? We have the resources and had you. Now let's take a look at some footage from when we decided to paint the face of Brutus the Baba Beefcake and call him the Yes No Man or whatever it was we called him. As you can see, I've got right now on a skirt and I'm going to shave. Hulk Hogan's mustache on the sides, okay? I'm going to give him no mustache. This has been part of Hulk Hogan's legacy, the mustache. As you can see, he's like a horse. That's because he was afraid that I was going to cut his lip. But here before me, we have the giant. Look how big he is. You know what, Mean Gene? I bet you somewhere in that singlet, there's a roll of baloney. Well, you're right, Kevin Sullivan, uh, Master Taskmaster. I'm going to take Hulk Hogan. First of all, I got to learn how to drive a truck. But once I learn how to drive a truck, maybe Medusa will teach me how to drive a truck. I'll drive a truck around circles, and I will run Hulk Hogan off into the top of Cobo Hall, the Joe Louis Arena. And then, and then I'll come back. And then I'll come back, and I'll go to the ring and I'll beat up Muhammad Ali. That's exactly right, Gene. And I'll put this big hand over your face, and I'll hold it there. Well, I've had my face in many places, but never the giant's hand before. Eric Bischoff, that's all from the Taskmaster. And you son of a bitch, let's go back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo, Mr. Shivani. Bravo. Thank you. I can't believe this is real, but I think your boy, Disco Inferno, it's coming out next. Okay. We actually have hey, a question. Go, I got to I got to go take a shit. Will you tell me how it, how it goes? Okay. Well, DJ Turnup wanted to know mm-hmm. who had a better stunner, Disco Inferno or Mikey Whipwreck? Well, Mikey Whipwreck had a better stunner number 1, and Disco Inferno didn't do anything correct correctly. Nothing. So, never saw one it, thing you liked of Disco. No, not one thing. Machine versus machine. The Hulkster's machine, the Giants' machine, if you're watching with us. It's Halloween Havoc. Don't you think that was the coolest name we had of all of our stuff? You know what's interesting? I think you and I sort of always thought Starcade was like the WCW WrestleMania. That's the way I felt as a kid. Mm-hmm. So, like when you got to December, I just knew, okay, this is going to be the big WCW pay per view. Starcade is. The WrestleMania equivalent. And Bischoff has said from day one, no, it was Halloween Havoc. It was always Halloween Havoc the whole time I was there. And with the benefit of hindsight, Halloween Havoc did feel like it had better cards a lot of times. Yeah. And the reason it was for for Eric was that Jim Hurd and his people and his completely fucked up Starcade. They completely fucked it. And um Starcade uh, should have been in November. Starcade should not have been a fucking battle bowl. And they just 
they they made it shit and it couldn't re- and and that's what Eric remembers and it never recovered from that. So Well there Holy he is right God. now shaking his ass and this was like a good time to remind everybody that right now you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the very best way to get action on sports in over 30 states including California, Florida, Georgia and Texas. Prize Picks is the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury policy so your lineup stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Prize Picks still keeps your lineup live. Prize Picks is the best play to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users and sign up today. By the way, Prize Picks invented the flex play which means you can still cash out even if your lineup isn't perfect. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. They've got a lot of stars and celebrities like Drewski and Joe Budden and Sugar Sean O'Malley. They're all playing prize picks, and you're going to love it too. I've got two cousins who are all about prize picks. They even wear the, the shirts and hats to breakfast. It's awesome. Prize picks puts their members first. That's what my cousins like. Their withdrawals are fast. They're safe. They're secure. When their picks hit, they can get their money in as quick as 15 minutes. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. You don't even need to win to receive the $50. It's guaranteed. And Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday, where each Tuesday, Price Picks will discount select player projections by up to 25% to provide even more for your lineup. And check this out. It's as simple as you just picking a couple of different highlights and you're, you're guessing things like this, Justin Jefferson for more than 83 and a half receiving yards and Patrick Mahomes for less than 267 and a half passing yards or this Tyreek Hill for more than 97 and a half receiving yards and Mr. Barkley for more than 67 and a half rushing yards. You're just picking more than or less than on stat projections just like that. It's that simple. And you can download the app today and use our code WHW to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Download the app today, use the code WHW, and you'll get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks. Run your game. You know, this is the only time we've been watching this show that it felt old school for me. Like, you know, DDP, I know his dress was maybe not what we're familiar with, and it was a little dated. Uh, but listen, Mark Miro, he was such a big part. I, and we did see him in the Attitude Era. And I guess we saw these two guys too. But to go from Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero to then Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Ming, that feels like a little bit of a styles clash. Like, that feels like a more modern era and two generations ago. Yeah. And not only that, we noticed Ming came in with that hood on. <laughs> that mask as he's walking in. Gee whiz. And by the way, he beats him. He beat Hacksaw in under two minutes with a nerve hold. I mean, Duggan was over here in Georgia. But yeah. Ming didn't sell a doggone thing. <laughs> that was pretty cool. I really, I mean, I wish in hindsight, Ming could have been a very credible main event heel. Sure, he could have. Again, anybody, I, I really believe, and you also got to have the, the right person, but I believe with any storyline, you can get someone over to a certain level. I mean, let, let's take a look at this, okay? Uh, take a look at the Outrunners. Did anyone expect them no. to do what they're doing right now? No. No. It just, uh, just happened. It just worked. Speaking okay. of, speaking of working, Hulk Hogan is in all black here, but they've shaved his mustache off. Right. It's interesting to see him in all black with no mustache, no black beard, mm-hmm. and Jimmy Hart without the bright neon. He's just wearing a black suit, clutching the belt. And he's basically saying here that he's like Don Corleone. That's right. He's comparing himself to the Godfather, a mafioso. Right. And he says that he's more powerful than any promoter on earth. And then Jimmy Hart's going to tell him that he's worried about Halloween Havoc. And Hogan says, be quiet, Jimmy. I'm going to tear the Dungeon of Doom apart one by one. And he called the giant big, nasty, and stinky. 
<laughs> like five times during this promo. Mm. And if you were to have someone describe you, aren't the, the words you'd like to hear big, nasty, and stinky? Mm, no. It's a new shirt available now at LoisRules.com. It's a black shirt with white letters that says big, nasty, and stinky. Come on down. Get yourself a new shirt at LoisRules.com. This is this is kind of weird to see Hogan in black before the NWO, right? Right. Isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy I guess he's to going to too. a going to a dark place, right? Yeah, because they, they shaved my mustache off, brother. Yeah, man. It's, it's like Samson yeah. when they cut his hair, dude. Right. Yeah. I was hanging and banging in the barbers and I fell asleep. <laughs> and they nicked me, man. And he's doing a pre-tape and not something live. Which hmm. means, aka, I don't want to go to Albany, Georgia and burn a date. Exactly right. So I'll And come. we Yeah. If you had arms like Hulk Hogan, would you ever wear sleeves? Nope. Me neither. And I'd have tattoos also. If you had a penis like Two Cold Scorpio, would you ever wear pants? Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. Couldn't I think, go on an airplane without pants on. I think you'd get a lot of attention, a white dude with a big black hog. <laughs> I think you could too. I mean, I think you might even be able to start like a an OnlyFans. What would an OnlyFans for commentators be? <sighs> and only I don't even know what what's on OnlyFans besides People revealing spread, pictures. Yeah, that's right. People spreading their butt cheeks. That's what OnlyFans okay. is for. Okay. All right. I don't know. Do you do you subscribe to any OnlyFans? Uh, not today. No. Not today. <laughs> but a couple of weeks ago, at, pre- at present time, no. no uh, okay. There, there was a curiosity got the cat once. Right. And then I was like, "What am I doing?" Yeah. No. Yeah, but it was one of those where you were like, "Oh, I didn't know that was a thing," and then you, you get in there and you're like, "This is weird, right?" I think I'm out of here. I guess what I've heard is that w- what people are looking for is that one-on-one contact, right, to be able to talk to them. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't have anybody in my life. I got a lot of people who um, who have a lot of fun things that they enjoy in their life. I'll say that. Yeah, but. I don't None know. Any, do. I don't know anybody who's done like webcam stuff or OnlyFans stuff. Like I don't. That's not in yeah. my realm of whatever. I was asking. You know, we, I've. Uh, I really think that one of the great things about being in wrestling, and I'm honest about this, is the camaraderie you have with with those backstage, and thus what makes it great is being able to take drives. Like, for instance, recently we went to Spokane, but we stayed in Seattle, and me and Matt Shivani and Jeff Jones drove from Spokane to Seattle after the show. It's a four-hour drive uh, late at night, and you just talk, and you talk about the business, and you talk about everything. And, you know, I've taken a lot of road trips with other people, like Alex Marvez, who's a good friend of mine, like Don Callis like Nigel McGinnis, and we just get in these great conversations. And I can't remember who I was talking to about this because we had a lot of different people with us on our rides, a lot of different, Dean Malenko at times. And I asked one, uh, I asked, I just, normally I I do the driving. And I asked one time, I said, what's the the excitement about these OnlyFans besides looking at provocative women? And they said, it's somebody, and I can't tell you who it was, said it's the one-on-one interaction you can get with them. Okay. In other words, you can talk to them, right? And they can talk to you and they can call you by name. And I guess, so I don't know. Oh, look at nature boy, Ric Flair. Tell me about that purple robe. Well, you've seen it before. It's been at StarCast many times. I used to own that one. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a cool one. Yeah, but not everybody who's listening knows about it. No, it's true. Aaron Sheen says, what's wrong with good old-fashioned porn? Um, who were some of your favorite porn stars growing up, Tony? Like, who's on your Mount Rushmore of porn? I don't have any. Well, uh, there's only one, and that's Whitney Wright. Oh, that's right. Because she's our girl. She's a hell of a hand, too. <laughs> you know, we had to do some research Whit- on her. Yeah. Whitney... Uh, as you may know, and I've said this before, she, uh, when we had the, uh, 
when we had the comic book, we had a Kickstarter campaign and she donated to the Kickstarter campaign. And her level that she donated was getting a personal phone call from Tony. Which I love. And I tried to call her like three times and couldn't get through. So I, I stopped. But uh, yeah, I like, I like Whitney. So what do we got here? We got, we got two on one. Is that no, it? No, no, it's a tag match. It is. Who's, ta- who's tagging with uh, Flair? Sting. Sting's not here but he yet. Ain't. He's not here yet. Okay. We're getting ready for uh, the big turn, you know. Oh. Flair always turns on Sting. It just hasn't happened yet. Yes. Right. Uh, Chris North is with us, and he says, why do you think Ming had a ceiling? He just kicked a six-foot, six-man in the head in 1995. Mm. Why do you think? Is it because he wasn't a strong promo? Well, that could have been, but you you don't have to be a strong promo to get over if you've got a good manager with you, right? Yeah. Bobby Eaton wasn't a strong promo. But he was over shit. Uh, of course, not everybody was as talented as Cornette was in doing promos either. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It could have been a combination of things. I just, uh, again, maybe they just didn't take enough time with him to turn him into something incredible. I mean, he had a pretty good run with the WWE. He was King Haku at one time. Um, but I don't know. We got another one here from Coach Keith. He says, what do you think if Hacksaw, Hacksaw Duggan came to WCW with the UWF merger? Would Sting still have a main event spot on the roster? That's interesting. If Duggan had not gone to the WWF and he'd gone to JCP instead, do you think mm-hmm. Duggan could have slid into the old Magnum TA spot? Or what no. would they have done with Duggan in WCW? Well, he would have been a he would have been a main eventer, but I don't think he would have replaced Sting. Don't you think don't you think Sting would have always had a main event spot on the roster? Yes. I think Sting was going to be a star no matter what. But I just yeah, meant, me too. you know, it did feel like the Magnum spot, you know, that rough and tumble style that Magnum did and then Hacksaw did. I'm not mm-hmm. saying they're the exact same performer. Obviously, they're not. But I could, I could see that. Did you see Flair go the wrong way on the figure four right there? I did not. <laughs> he went the wrong way. He had to step back over Arn again. Arn just laying there looking up at him. Oh, God. Arn and Pillman's a, it's a fun tag hell team. Of a team. Yeah, you're not kidding. Hell of a tag team. Hey, we should mention uh, on the other channel, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is going to defeat Doink in what would wind up being Doink's last WWF match until the gimmick battle royal at WrestleMania in 2001. The Smoking mm-hmm. Guns with your buddy Billy Gunn beat yep. PG 13, which included Bill Dundee's son. And look who's here, Sting making the save. We'd have Dean Douglas who you know is Shane Douglas, but he was doing a teacher gimmick, defeat the future Johnny Swinger while Sean was calling in to Monday Night Raw to talk about the attack in Syracuse where those Marines beat the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. And we had Jerry Lawler in a shark cage while Bret Hart wrestles Isaac Yankum DDS in a steel cage match. Of course, we know Isaac Yankum would later become fake Diesel, Kane, Mm -hmm. and then the mayor of Knox County, but... Isaac Yankum, what do you think about this? A heel dentist and a heel teacher in Dean Douglas. What do you think about that? A heel dentist, to me, would frighten the shit out of me, wouldn't it? Oh, for sure. I mean, you could, you could really, you could really do something with a heel dentist. You know, using the 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 term. You remember the movie Marathon Man? Nope. Okay, well, Lawrence Olivier played a a dentist a Nazi dentist who resurfaced in New York and he had some diamonds that were, had been stolen from him or had been put away. And Dustin Hoffman got tied up in this and they brought him down to a basement and uh, Lawrence Olivier said, is it safe? And Dustin said, I don't know what you mean. He said, is it safe? And so they opened his mouth up and they drilled into his tooth without Novocaine. Okay. Imagine that pain. And then he said, oil of cloves uh, or the drill. Is it safe? 
And Dustin said, I don't know what you mean. He drilled again. Oh, it was great. Um, I just had so to anyway. look it up. I looked up Marathon Man, and I got to look mm-hmm. up this other goof you're talking about. What did you say his name was? Lawrence what now? Sir Lawrence Olivier. You don't know You don't know who that goof is? You Well, I guess he... I guess you guys are uncultured in Gunnersville. No, I mean, did he used to tag with Joey Janela and GCW or? Yeah, he, he used to. He used to carry uh, Paul Heyman's lunch until he had to bring it in a, pay, in a pickup truck. I'm more likely to know who brought pa- Paul Heyman his lunch in a pickup truck than some famous actor who was born in 1902. Okay, there you go. I'm just saying. Anyway, what, what, what I'm getting at is that, that he was such a heel with the drilling a guy's tooth, right? Yeah. I just, I just, that is. Hmm. Can you imagine being so good at your job that they name an award after you, like the Lawrence Olivier Award? Isn't that something? That's amazing. Yeah. Like, you think there'll be a Tony Schiavone Award, and what will it be? Like, chowing down on parking lot panties, glass bottle no. boat rides? Very honestly, I hope it has something to do with donating to uh, animal animal rescue. Yeah. yeah, I certainly hope that because we do take a portion of our money every month and give it to animals. Now, as ta- yeah, it's help, also taking care of ours. Help me understand now. Mm-hmm. Is animal control like these shelters you're talking about? There, that's still an issue because I was under the impression that we don't have any animals in the shelters because they're eating the dogs. No, no. There's animals in the shelters. There are tons of animals. As a matter of fact, I I went out to the animal shelter last week, and I don't know why, and I shouldn't have done it. All right, we're getting ready to see Flair turn on Sting here, aren't we? No, I think that happens at Halloween Havoc. Oh, it happens at Halloween Havoc. Okay. Hey, I think we were on to something earlier, though. When you get to TV, you're going to TV this week, right? Of course. I'm going uh, leaving Wednesday morning go to going to San Jose. When you get there, you know, we sort of freestyled some good stuff. You should yeah. go talk to your friend Britt there and let her know you've got an idea, like a heel dentist. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass on that. I, you know, you could just you could tell her the whole thing about the drills and the yeah. fingers in the mouth. Yeah. Let me ask no, you, pass. from a finger in the mouth standpoint. Okay. Who was the first girl you remember fish hooking? Fish hooking. I don't know. I don't even know what that means, to be honest with you. Okay. I guess I'm not as worldly as you guys in Gundersville, Alabama are. No, we, I know over in Marietta, y'all jack off Star Lawrence or Olivier. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> Give me the old uh, two hand special. <laughs> Speaking of two hand special, what do you think Sting's doing or saying to Ric Flair here? I don't know. He said, let me tell you something, big nose or beak, as I like to call you. I don't know how long you're going to live. You're probably going to outlive all of us, okay? Because you got so much liquor in you. But here's the fact. You turn your back on me. Oh, me turn my back on you. Let me do a little dance here. Yes, you turn your back on me, and I'll punch you so hard your nose will fly out the back of your head. Oh, by the way, 25 years from now? How many girlfriends or wives you going to have, huh? Tell me. How many times you're going to die and then come back to life, huh? Tell me that. How many times you're going to smoke dope? How many times are you going to have a, a shitty energy drink made out of mushroom? High five. I'll have it. We'll be a team. I don't give a damn. I'll have all the money in the world, and I'll spend all the money in the world. Pretty, a- pretty accurate representation there. It sure was. Uh, you know, as you and I are recording this tomorrow night, Mm. Richard and, uh, my wife, Megan and my, our daughter, Morgan, they're all going to see post Malone in Birmingham. Oh, wow. Yeah. You a big post Malone fan. Yeah. I wouldn't go see post Malone at gunpoint. I don't think. Yeah. I was, uh, bribed, begged, Mm -hmm. negotiated. I'll have to look at pictures. I won't be there. Yeah, good call. Not so, only did I not want to go to most Post Malone, I would not want to go to Post Malone with Ric Flair with me. Don't want to say it. I know what you're saying. And as I take a look and I see the credits rolling here and a preview for next week, 
I feel like, unfortunately, I have to say right now, it's about that time. Hello, everyone. This is Sir Lance Olivier talking to you from my OnlyFans page, telling everybody that next week here on Monday Nitro, Sting and Lex Luger will be together. Ric Flair will be on there as well, and he'll be, for a change, sober. And for all of us at What Happened When, thank you for listening. We are desperately out of time. Don't forget, join us each and every Wednesdays when we come to you on Westwood One Cumulus. But each and every Monday, we come to you ad-free and only on Patron, patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday. And of course, adfreeshows.com. Thank you, you redneck. What would you do with two house payments? Tony Schiavone here to tell you about SaveWithConrad.com. When you refinance with Save with Conrad, you can do so with confidence, knowing not only will you get a great rate, but you will get to skip two house payments. You don't need perfect credit, and there's no money out of your pocket. Find out how we can help you skip two today at SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 2129, Equal Housing Lender. SaveWithConrad.com.